You are listening to the Holistic Lifestyle Guide Podcast, the show that guides you on your holistic lifestyle journey to a healthy body, mind, and soul aligned with nature. Hello and welcome to episode number 30 of the Holistic Lifestyle Guide Podcast. This episode is called the 10 Best Self-Care Tips for Winter. Now that it's winter in the Northern Hemisphere, this I figured this would be a great time to do an episode about this because there's so many people that suffer from like seasonal affective disorder and things like that in the winter time with less daylight and I figured I would I, I'm doing my best to help people get through the winter. There's a lot of self-care tips out there and I went through and picked the 10 best ones. So let's get right into it. The first one is to start journaling. Now this might not be a surprise to you if if you've been listening to this podcast for a while because I talk about journaling all the time. It's one of the things that I recommend that people do for so many benefits. It's good for the body, mind, and the soul. And when, winter is the really the best time to start journaling if you don't already do this. Um, so journaling is, it's such a therapeutic form of expression. It, it's good for introspection and contemplation. It's a way to process your thoughts and feelings for the day so you can clear your mind before bed. You can reduce stress and solve your problems and so much more. And wintertime is perfect to start journaling because you're, there's really not much else to do. It's, it's the perfect season to go within, to search for answers, to get to know yourself and focus on you. So I learned that the words journey and journal both trace back to the same origins. They are variations of the word day in French. A journey is an activity that takes a day, give or take, and a journal is where you write about your day. So what a perfect combination of words when referring to the activity of journaling about the activity of your day. So I'll move on to the next one now. The next one is to take warm baths before bed. This is a great way to end your day and set the tone for bed. This has been proven to be effective for better sleep. Um, after you get out, you know, your body cools down and that cool down temperature triggers sleepiness. Not only are baths good for sleep, they are even better for your mental health. Having a peaceful, quiet soak in solitude, it can be enough to erase all of the day's stresses. When you use calming essential oils and candles, you can amplify your experience. So that's a little bit tied into the next one I'm going to talk about, and that is to pamper your body. So other than taking baths, you can pamper your body inexpensively, but just as luxuriously as if you had gone to a spa. There are plenty of books and videos out there on how to make your own natural lotions, exfoliators, scrubs, creams, and masks. Um, because you should never use products that have unknown chemicals in them. You can always find the equivalent in natural form. So just remember the skin absorbs everything. You can use common homemade ingredients like honey, yogurt, eggs, sugar, oil such as coconut oil, sesame oil, olive oil. And in Ayurveda, they actually recommend that everyone massage their body with oil every night before bed, usually sesame oil. This is called Abhyanga. Especially in the winter, it is important to apply lotion or oil to the skin every day. Making your own health and beauty products is fun and better for you than anything sold in mainstream stores. I get all my ingredients for making DIY products from Mountain Rose Herbs. They're a really good website that I recommend. They have the best quality ingredients, so I don't have to worry about any added chemicals. So if you want to make your own products and you want to order some herbs and oils and things like that from Mountain Rose Herbs, I will leave a link down in the show notes for them. Um, you can also use bentonite clay. That works great on its own. That is a 
purifying, detoxing skin treatment. You can use cocoa butter, shea butter, vitamin E. Those are all great for the skin. So pampering your body also includes wearing soft, warm clothing. I practically live in fleece tops and bottoms from October until April. This is especially worth noting for any of you who are a predominantly vata constitution. That is the Ayurveda body type that is thin and prone to cold. So that is actually the majority of the population. So if you are usually cold and don't have a whole lot of body fat, then I would definitely recommend sitting around your house with soft warm clothing on. It's a game changer. So another way that you can pamper your skin is to do dry brushing. This helps move your lymph out of your body and that is toxins. The part the part you will probably notice first though is how soft it makes your skin feel. I like these, they're called Garshana gloves. I like to use them for this because they're less abrasive than the brushes. And that's also an Ayurveda thing. So I learned that when I was studying Ayurveda. So now moving on to the next tip I have for you, and that is to meditate daily. This suggestion is probably the most common one in all areas of holistic health because it greatly improves all aspects of your health, physical, mental, and spiritual. So doing this in the morning or before bed, or really any time of the day, but if you do it in the morning, it'll help to start your day off on the right foot. And if you do it before bed, it's really good to help you sleep. In fact, sometimes I, I'm sleeping within five minutes after I meditate. You can squeeze it in any time you have a minute though, because any, any time, you know, if you just have five minutes in the middle of your day, that is definitely better than nothing. So along with meditation, I like to tell people to use that in conjunction with journaling because they work so well together. If you meditate first, your mind will be calmer and clearer, which will allow you to get, you know, re you'll be able to reach your intuition and messages that are flowing through you. And if you journal before you meditate, this could be um, the brain dump that you need to clear your mind so that meditation is easier. I suggest doing it in that order if you do have trouble calming your mind for meditation. The next one on my list is to eat in-season foods. This is one of the most important items on this list and there is a reason why certain foods grow at certain times of the year because our digestive systems thrive when they are able to receive the proper nourishment at the proper times of the year. So in the fall and winter, our bodies need more fat to stay warmer. So it is okay to put on a few pounds over the winter. That's normal. There is a stigma that this is bad, but remember our ancestors used to gather lots of fattening foods at this time of year and they would feast very often. This doesn't mean that we should eat the fattiest meats and cover everything in butter. What the body needs most right now is protein and grounding foods and these are more filling. This is why winter is such a popular time to eat chili and chicken soup and beef stew and things like that. So it's a time to eat less summer foods like less fruits, less salads, and then start eating more hearty warm filling foods like like root vegetables and squashes and beans. Think comfort food. So um, winter is also one of the best times to eat Buddha bowls. I just love Buddha bowls. I am obsessed with this one that's, um, you could, for the base, you can use rice or quinoa. Um, there's probably some other variants of that, but it also has, um, whatever vegetables you have left over. I've been using broccolini. Oh, I'm obsessed with broccolini. It's better than broccoli as far as flavor and it's easier to prepare. Um, I'm obsessed with it, but it's you can't find it everywhere though. So anyway, this Buddha bowl has that and it's got like peas and carrots and then um, I, f I put olive oil, I fry my vegetables in the olive, or not olive oil, uh, coconut oil. And um, I'm not going to remember the rest of the recipe, but I hope I'm inspiring you to research Buddha bowls because what they are is just a collection of healthy 
vegetables and, and they're just great because in the winter our bodies are craving more calories so you can give yourself a break you know eat eat more fattening things but just don't go overboard so for holiday celebrations you can stick to one helping because when you go back for seconds that's what pu pushes you over the edge when you overeat you will feel exhausted and the body is putting all of its energy into digestion so to avoid that problem just eat smaller meals more frequently that might work for you because in the spring and summer you can easily get by with you know two or three meals a day but in the fall and the winter I, I've even noticed that I can eat four meals a day and that's better I usually keep the last one lighter though because it's always better to eat the bulk of your food in the morning and then midday when the Sun is the strongest that's when your digestive um, fire <laughs> is more efficient that's how they say it in Ayurveda so drinking warm fluids is also important in the winter so I stick to tea um, and hot chocolate hot apple cider those sorts of things rather than cold water or soda and in the morning I drink warm lemon water and I pretty much just drink tea at night because it's a great way to wind down before bed and stay warm <laughs> so the next one on my list is to use a sun lamp with less daylight in the in the winter it's easy to slip into depression this is what seasonal affective disorder is so that's a pretty accurate synonym um sad <laughs> sad our bodies create serotonin by sunlight so the less sunlight means lower happiness levels so getting good sleep is dependent on the amount of light that reaches the eyes especially in the morning so if you work nighttime hours if you sleep late or if you live where there is very little sunlight it will improve your sleep immensely if you use a sun lamp as soon as you get up each day a sun lamp can help alleviate sad and keep your circadian rhythm in check this is the sun lamp that I bought it's called circadian it's from circadian optics um, it's one of the best things I've ever spent money on it really helped me to get my circadian rhythm back to normal during the winter time and that's hard for me because I actually have a circadian rhythm disorder and I my whole life I've been on a later schedule than everybody else like I can't get up early in the morning and I can't fall asleep early at night well I started using this sun lamp and along with some of the other things that I recommend for people to get good sleep I did a lot of stuff but I was able to switch my sleeping hours a little bit earlier than normal not saying that I was getting up at 5 a.m. but I mean maybe 7 or 8 a.m. and that's that was a huge jump for me so um, all that being said it's actually okay to sleep more in the winter time with earlier sunsets it is much easier to get sleepy and be ready for bed around 9 or 10 p.m. or maybe even 8 sometimes so sleep an extra hour or two and don't feel guilty as long as you're not sleeping your whole day away it's it's still best for our health to get up between 5 and 7 a.m. so so try to get the extra sleep at night when the dark hours come sooner that's worked wonders for me so the next one on my list is to maintain your exercise regimen although it is okay to eat and sleep more in the winter the same leeway does not apply to exercise unfortunately <laughs> exercising helps us keep our muscle which we definitely need this is why eating lots of protein in the winter is a good idea so keep up your usual exercise routine if you can if you live where it gets down to unsafe temperatures outside you can invest in indoor equipment such as a treadmill so you can at least get your walking done I have a treadmill and it's one of the best things I've ever spent my money on too because where I live I live in the north where pretty much from November until April we can't really go outside without bundling up and even then it's you know it your tip of your nose gets cold and it even gets through to your bones it's just one of those kind of colds so my treadmill has been a lifesaver I also dance and I also do hula hooping although the hula hooping is a little bit challenging indoors I need to do it in the very center of my kitchen which is the biggest room in my house but even then it's not as much space as outside so you have to do what you can when it comes to exercise 
So the next one on my list is to give special care to your immune system. So I'm gonna quickly go through some ways you can improve your immune system. And in the winter time, this is when we really need to amp these up. This is cold and flu season. So the first thing that I recommend to people is to cut down on alcohol and tobacco. So that might be hard and not everybody's gonna listen to that advice, but those two things can take can go a long way in improving your immune system. Of course, eating more fruits and vegetables, although in the winter time you want to eat more vegetables than fruits because fruit is cold and you want more grounding vegetables like I mentioned earlier. And I also already mentioned getting enough exercise. That's really good for your immune system. Not overeating, although in the winter time it's little more acceptable to eat a little more, but just don't overeat to the point where, you know, your stomach is sticking out and you can't move and you're just exhausted. That's a sign that you have overeaten. Another way to improve your immune system is to reduce stress. That's kind of an obvious one. In some ways you can reduce stress is to work on your mental health and your spiritual health. It's, it's, improving your spiritual health is something that people don't usually think about, but it's been proven that people that are healthier have a stronger spiritual, um, whatever you'd say it, but you know, they, they work on their spirituality. Improving your digestive system is probably the one of the best ways to improve your di whole immune system as a whole because your digestion really dictates your health. So that's a whole nother subject and I won't say too much about that, but gut health is crucial for immune system. Use a lot of herbs and spices. They are good for your immune system, for your digestive system. They are um, also good to help you eat things you wouldn't normally eat because they make food taste better. Um, getting enough sleep, of course, is good for the immune system. Oh, so much. And that's why I think this is also another reason why the body naturally wants to sleep a lot in the winter, other than the fact that it's dark more, but also because our bodies heal overnight when they're sleeping and they are rejuvenating and doing all of that repair work. And that's going to require more sleep. Also, you can take zinc, vitamin D, vitamin C, and drink plenty of water. Moving on to the next one on my list here, develop your indoor hobbies. So when we are forced to stay inside, we might get lazy. We might just end up on the couch. You know, that's not the best use of your time. So instead, I like to tell people to find something that you can do to better yourself. You know, why not use this time to finish those unread books or play board games with your family. Find a great way to stay connected and have fun. So ask yourself what are some things that you've been wanting to do or explore further that you couldn't get to over the summer because maybe you were too busy in the summer, you were always outside. And so winter is a great time to do more things like baking or crafting or creating of any kind. Maybe you want to keep your brain sharp by doing crossword puzzles and word searches and things like that. Now I am to my last item on this list of self-care tips for winter, and that is to plan for next year. You probably weren't expecting this one, but winter can be hard to get through when you don't have as many plans as you did in spring and summer. So you might as well use this downtime to your advantage by getting a planner for the following year. This is an especially popular thing to do around New Year, so there are no shortage of planners to choose from. And some of you might not know this, but I make planners and I sell them on my Etsy shop. So I will leave a link down below in the show notes. Um, if you're interested in buying some planners, I've got all types of planners and other things as well, but that's a whole other subject. So, um, that's it for this week's episode of the Holistic Lifestyle Guide Podcast. Yeah, <laughs> Holistic Lifestyle Guide Podcast. I'm going to have to slay that, say that a little slower next time. Don't forget to join me next week for another episode and check out my website, holisticlifestyleguide.com 
where you can read articles about holistic wellness and you can subscribe to get freebies delivered to your inbox every Tuesday. Thank you so much for listening.